Hi everybody. On this video, we're going to be looking at problem 5.58 from the Klein Organic Chemistry 3rd Edition textbook, studying how to convert uh, Fisher projections into bond line structures. Uh, now, as you have read, Fisher projections are a very common projection, especially in biochemistry, but also in organic chemistry. But they're not the most uh, accurate in terms of real life structures. So remember that a Fisher projection has all of the um, horizontal substituents coming towards us, what we would normally represent as um, solid wedges like this, and all of the vertical lines represented with dashes as uh, going away from us. And so what that means, if we were to sort of turn this Fisher projection 90 degrees, what we would see is that in fact, the carbon backbone sort of goes like this. If our eye was here looking at it, all of those verticals are going away from the viewer. And all of the substituents are coming towards the viewer. Uh, and so it's a, it's a bit of a strange looking structure. Uh, kind of reminds me of a, a seahorse or something like that. Um, so in order to draw it into a more traditional tetrahedral structure, we have to mentally rotate around the structure and think about what it is we're seeing. And that comes from the fact that most of the time when we draw a single tetrahedral center, we draw it something like this. Oops. Something like this, right? We have two in-plane bonds. We have one solid wedge coming towards us and we have one dash wedge going away from us. In the case of the Fisher projection, we're actually looking at it in a different way. We're looking at it uh, in such a way, if I turn this 90 degrees, um, so that I have, in fact, my uh, structure that looks like this. Um, and that's a little bit strange. It's a little bit of a different way to think about the tetrahedron. Um, we could accomplish that by sort of thinking about placing our eyeball down here and looking at the molecule this way, such that the um, item that was connected onto this uh, dashed line would then be on our left, if we were looking at it from that vantage point. Uh, sorry, scratch that. On the right, if we were looking at it from that vantage point. Right from that vantage point, that thing is uh, going into the page, so it would be to our right. And the object that was coming towards us from that vantage point would be on our left right there. Um, so we have to mentally twist this around. And it's one thing if you're dealing with a single tetrahedral center, but in these molecules in problem 5.58, we're looking at uh, molecules that have three stereo centers that we have to deal with. And so what we're going to be doing here is converting these, thinking about how these look in uh, sort of real, uh, real space, okay? And so I'm going to focus in on problem C right here. And to say uh, what we want to think about doing is thinking about drawing this molecule with wedges and dashes and representing it in an appropriate stereochemical way. All right. Now, if our um, backbone uh, were as simple as it's drawn here, right? like this, then we would say, well, that's fine. Um, then I can just draw all the pieces where they are, right? So let's start there. And yes, I realize I'm just redrawing the fissure with the carbon shown. Bear with me a second. Um, when we convert this to a standard bond line drawing, remember, we're going to have that sort of uh, zigzaggy thing, that sort of dashed kind of a structure. So I'm going to take the same exact thing that I've just drawn, and I'm going to redraw it in a sideways format, because let's face it, that's how most uh, bond line drawings are drawn. Um, notice here I've turned it sort of uh, in this direction in order to accomplish that, and so I'm going to draw my uh, OHs and Hs where they uh, belong to keep the same relative positioning. Okay, like that. But now I have to remember that, in fact, <clears throat> all of my carbons aren't going in the same uh, orientation. 
right? I'm zigzagging back and forth. And effectively, what that's going to mean, if we want to think about uh, shortcuts, so to speak, is that I'm going to have my carbons, uh, every other one, essentially, is going to be turned relative to what I've drawn here. And so for, uh, you know, ease of use here, if we want to think about it this way, I'm going to leave my OHs uh, on, the, on the ethyl, the carbon closest to the ethyl, which uh, technically I guess it's carbon 4 here. I'm going to keep it uh, in that forward-facing orientation, which would leave the hydrogen in the back. Um, <clears throat> my middle carbon is going to have rotated, and so uh, where it would have been the opposite orientation uh, as what I had before, right, These, this was drawn down and this was drawn up, um, now, as I've rotated that around in order to accomplish the, the zigzag, the back and forth structure, um, this now will be also on a wedge. And now my third carbon, this one didn't have to move. It's still uh, basically where it was. And so I'll be drawing that on its own uh, wedge like this. So the short version of this is that if I only have two stereo centers, I can just draw it exactly as is shown in the picture. Let me zoom out and let's look at um, maybe part D here to see that as an example. Um, in this case, notice I do have only two stereo centers. Uh, I'm showing the chlorine going in one direction and the OH going in the other direction. And so when I draw this, it's easy enough. Oops. There we go. It's easy enough to just draw it in that sort of scorpion tail scenario uh, and say, well, okay, my chlorine is going to be going in one direction and my OH is going to be going in the other direction. And uh, it doesn't matter which, which way you draw this. Um, maybe I'll color code this just to say, uh, you know, if I take my methyl group here and I rotate him over here. Now, of course, the chlorine is going to be closest to that. I can draw that chlorine in some orientation, and I'll draw the OH in the other orientation, right, to indicate that they went in opposite directions like that. Um, likewise, problem E next to this. Um, now I've got a chlorine and an OH on the same side. So again, I can pretty easily draw four carbons like this in that kind of scorpion tail uh, infinite curve kind of a setup. And again, um, you know, I'll keep my methyl group uh, here. Uh, I'll, I'll tip that over to the left um, just because I chose to, not because it had to go that direction. But now both of my substituents are on the same side, chlorine and OH. You can imagine if I tried to get to a bigger molecule now, it's going to be twisted around even more. And so if we were to go back to this one that we were looking at in the first place, we would say <clears throat> I could try to draw the same thing, and I could say let's go up to here, across, so here's my ethyl group, okay, connecting to stereo center 1, then stereo center 2, then stereo center 3, and then finally back to the methyl group. Um, and that's okay, right? If I wanted to go about it in that direction, I could say that's totally appropriate. Um, I'm going to choose now uh, which direction I'm going to put these things based on their uh, orientation in the molecule. I know I've got the OH on the ethyl proximal carbon going in one direction, same direction as on the methyl proximal carbon, but opposite to the one uh, that's on the, uh, the middle carbon. And so I could draw it you know, something like uh, this, for instance. Right, something like that. Um, <clears throat> I would want to make sure that I'm drawing these in uh, the right relative orientation, right? So I had up there left, right, left. Now, as a consequence, I've drawn um, forward, backward, forward. But, of course, this is not the same, uh, not the appropriate 
sawhorse up and down zigzag kind of a structure. And that's what I was kind of trying to get at in that other discussion um, just a moment ago, is that uh, I need to have um, moved this middle carbon around right here. That one essentially needs to move down to this position. And in order to do that, the substituents on it will have to rotate around. And so that OH that was drawn as a, um, a dashed line going away from me, once I rotate that carbon around in free space, it's going to end up being a wedge coming towards me. Okay. So the concept here is uh, trying to figure out the strategy, trying to maintain the relative orientation of each stereo center. And of course, you could go back and and do your naming and numbering of each stereo center and make sure that you've got the right R's and S's. Um, but depending on how many of these you're doing and how much uh, time you have to do them, you may not have time to go through and, and properly name each and every single one. Um, so the more you practice with this, the better you're going to get and the easier it's going to become for you. So with that, practice lots. Good luck and uh, look for other videos. Thanks.